recently I visited my sister in Montana and there was a man that I met at church when I was just talking to my sister. She pointed me out to him. His name is Dr. Norman Petty. She mentioned that he has invented or he built uh, many different things in the electronics world. Dr. Petty is a scientist, an engineer, inventor, and he has earned over 100 patents. He founded a website called Optimum Wisdom Laboratories, where he presents different things that he has worked on in the past and things that he's working on currently. He is also getting into alternative energy. My sister pointed out that he has built a grow dome, as he calls it. It connects with my other ideas with aircrete dome homes. Plus, he thinks the same way that I do with making something really cheap that you could do on your own that anybody can do. This grow dome that he built, he built for under $300. So I wanted to go over to his house and just talk to him and ask questions. And I ended up meeting his wife and talking to her as well. So we tried to get it at a place that was sort of flat. Oh yeah. Uh, but as you look around here, this is this is basically what we're building on. It's rocks, big rocks. Just a lot of rocks in the soil, huh? You can see them down here. Those are rocks that they took out to excavate here all along the way. So as we were trying to level this out, we couldn't really dig down. And so we found that it's it was better to just bring up. Uh, we we uh, got the three quarter crush, three quarter inch crush. Uh -huh. And so that's what the base is. But it took. Uh, to get it level, as I said before, it was almost uh, 17 tons of gravel. <laughs> this type of gravel right here? That's it. Okay. Yep. So this is it. It's cool enough now. The, the top you can see, those, those are the vents. And uh, uh, they'll open at about 65 to 70 degrees. <laughs> and so it kind of keeps things cool. So there's a temperature sensor in there and it just pops open? Uh, yeah. Cool. It's actually, um, this is more way in. Cool, very nice. Look at that. So it makes for Ooh, yeah. really kind of a pretty garden. Uh -huh. um, my, my wife's the gardener, so if you, if you want an explanation on how she set things up, uh -huh. we can go get her. She's ready to talk to you if, if you want. Oh, okay, sure. Um, but uh, so I was telling you that the, the dome doesn't really allow rectangles very well. Oh, okay. So these are trapezoids, and I could be a little more efficient if I had just done smaller trapezoids for each one of these things. There would have been 15 of them instead of seven, oh. but I'm not really wasting very much space, you can see there. Yeah. Um, the plastic is six mils, uh, and it's, it's multi-layer, uh, so the um, inside layer is a, uh, it's an infrared reflector. So they say if it's warm in here, you want to reflect it back out. Okay. The outside layer is a UV protectant. So if you go to the hardware store and get any kind of plastic, it'll degrade within nine months because of the sun. Okay. Uh, this has been standing for five years now. Um, and you can see the plastic is still pretty, pretty decent. Uh, this last year, we had a very aggressive deer who thought to he wanted to get in here, and you can see the bite marks there. So we patched those. Okay. Uh, oh, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got a little butterfly in here. Yeah. They come in when the vents are open, and then they can't find their way back out. Okay. Um, oh, that's very cool. So, and then um, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the website at all. I didn't yet, no. Okay. I, um, it, the nice thing about this is it, it, it leaves very nice attachment points for 
I just ran a rope across here. So we have a trellis here for the things that need climbing. climbing. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not quite certain what these are. Um, again, we'll have to ask Anne. So, but, some uh, kind of squash or something. Um, our first year when we did this, she planted, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember what it was. You know, it just kind of took over this whole area. Mm -hmm. Oh, here she comes. She'll okay. answer the questions. For okay, me. cool. Ooh, this is Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just recording this, so just so you know. I... This, is, this, is her, this is her pride and choice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> My happy place. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I just, so, what, we'll have to tell them what these right. things are. Yeah. Um, cucumbers. Yeah. Cucumbers. Uh -huh. uh, beans. I got a little too much fertilizer in the beginning, but they're doing fine now. Uh huh. Uh, um, tomatoes, of course. Uh, um, peppers. Celery. Small onions. Watercress. Five different kinds of lettuce, iceberg, three leaves, and butter head. Um, cilantro in the back. Uh, um, you call these snap peas, sugar snaps. Oh, right, yeah. Uh -huh. And in here, there's walla wallas, three different kinds of carrots, sweet potatoes that just came and got planted. Uh, um, Turnips, parsnips, beets. So all the root vegetables I try uh -huh. to keep in here. So very nice. That's it. Yeah. So um, the first year, uh, I tried to grow zucchini in here, and it grew so big it looked like an Amazon jungle. <laughs> <laughs> it just took over the whole thing. Uh, um, I've also. Uh, grown spinach in here but I decided not to do that this year in here because spinach tends to bolt really easily if it's too hot and so it would go I'd get a few leaves and then it would just bolt right up to seed so now I have spinach in a big tub on the deck so hopefully it will prefer the cooler and give me a little longer yeah. leaf cycle okay. <laughs> so. cool so how many years have you done this? This is the fourth year planting. Okay. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you get a pretty good yield from all of this? I, the first year, um, it took me two or three years to figure out what two people, you know, can eat. And, and then the tomatoes, I like to, you know, make some sauce and, oh, and yeah. stuff. For, okay. Um, I also tried broccoli the first year in here, but I decided not to do any of the cabbage family because um, because we don't have electricity in here, and so you don't get a lot of good air circulation, so that uh, encourages insects and stuff. So the cabbage family is notorious oh. for you know all kinds of wormy little things so oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. I don't grow those things in here um, that makes sense so, um, so it lasts you I don't know um, you can get pretty much all summer all summer, all summer yeah. long okay yeah. cool it, it does uh, um, last uh, speaking of spinach I need to backtrack I planted a fall uh, crop last year in here and then uh, we got distracted with some other issues and so kind of in the last fall things got a little forgotten in here so in march he plowed me out with a snowblower for a path because okay. <laughs> we had so much late snow and i came in here and the spinach was thriving and so the spinach went through all of montana winter and survived and so my theory is that during the ice age, the cockroaches fed on spinach because they both <laughs> survived. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, 
Very nice. Uh, but I can usually get two cups of carrots. This is the first year I've grown turnips and parsnips, uh, um, mostly because we went to a paleo diet, and they use paleo uses a lot of those root vegetables at, to substitute for white potatoes. So these are actually white sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. I've heard of the paleo diet. I have a friend doing that. He says it's solving a lot of problems for him. Yeah. Like in her health. Yes. Your yeah. joints and inflammation and all that stuff. Yes. We, we've had real good success with the paleo diet. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, plant, I, I plant the vine stuff on this side because in the afternoon the sun comes that way. And if I plant it, if I did it over there, it would block the sun for everything else. So... Um, so what, they, what about the netting? Uh, just go over that one more time. It's well, it's just so strong. I bought it the the second year because um, the first year, you know, I just tried staking things up with dells and stuff, and that wasn't sufficient. So then the second year, we strung this vine, and I've never had to replace it. It's just so strong, and it holds the plants really well. So yeah, you can see that one's starting to climb up. In a couple of months, the the entire netting will be covered. So. And the peas I keep here because they like to be cool, and it's actually a little bit warm for the peas, but I plant them early, so they seem to do okay. They'll be blossoming out pretty quick here. So it's your pride and joy you come in here and... Every day. Every day. Yeah, every day, yeah, that and the perennial flower garden I've got going out there. Okay. The excess, I'm trying some things outside this year. Uh -huh. um, a, a little bit of excess that I didn't have room for in there. My neighbor gave me some eggplant. Um, I don't know, and I also planted asparagus oh, this yeah. year. We'll see how it does. So. <clears throat> uh -huh. so, anyway. Cool. Looks awesome. Yeah, I'm totally excited about it. Yeah, it's 65 in here. The and 65 degrees inside. And it's, and it's 50 degrees outside. So you so. said this extends your growing time. What was that again? Early March till uh, November. Early March till November. Wow. What was it before that without the dome? Uh, it's 82 days. Uh -huh. So it's... Uh, where you don't get freezing at night and I'm not quite certain what the dates are but it's only 82 days oh. and that's without trying to heat it or anything right, right. it just that's does all, it on its own all passive completely passive most of these seedlings I started in February under a grow light oh and so okay. then I transplanted them what mid-April or so mm -hmm. yeah or early April so it yeah. still has potential of, you could still heat it during the winter, is that right? Or Well, we're 50 feet from the house. Uh -huh. We had three feet of snow. That means I've got to make a path 50 feet through three feet of snow just to get to the greenhouse. <laughs> it's not, not worth it. it. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Understood, yep. Yeah. Very nice. Mm. Did you tell it's me? all uphill. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, explain the attempted break-in? I did. Yeah. yeah, we couldn't tell in the beginning if it was hoof marks or teeth marks. Yeah, look at that. But those are teeth marks. Yeah, you can see the individual teeth. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to identify which so, deer did it. Yeah. But it was, but it was easy to patch. You know, they does. He had this re repair tape. Or? Yeah, it's a repair tape. Again, it's it's intended for the greenhouse. Huh. So it has the same coefficient of expansion, oh. and uh, so it stays nice and taut. And, um, the panels, uh, you can see it here. If you look at the panels from here over to there, that's one sheet of plastic. And so they're folded over, so we do half, hex half hexagons or partial uh, pentagons. And uh, 
the, then we staple it on the inside. And so when we put things together, the staples are all hidden. Oh. So it comes out quite attractive, uh, whether you're inside or out. Um, so you can kind of see where the, where the panels go. This is a pentagon over here. And I, of course, you can't do half of a pentagon, so it's a partial pentagon. So you have these three sections and then the two up there. So, so this is, is this an idea that you came up with and you oh, no. developed uh, or? Pen pentagon or uh, geodesic domes were invented in, I think it was 1918 by uh, a Swiss German scientist to make a dome for an observatory. And uh, then Buckminster Fuller kind of coined the idea of, he invented the name geodesic dome. And uh, so that, that grew and all of the math is available. And so I just went through the math and decided, well, how big do you want it? Uh, and uh, what can I do to, to minimize the the cost. And so the majority, there's only three lengths of the struts. And so I went through and figured out how many different struts I could get in a, a standard two by four. And I grouped that and got all the angles in. And uh, so it was optimized not only for, um, for the site, but to use that uh, material as efficiently as possible. Yes. <clears throat> and you can make it a little larger and still have the, uh, the plastic um, supported. But when you go larger, it's hard to assemble because it's, it's, it's 10 and a half feet high in the, in the center and you kind of, it just becomes difficult. So, and if I had gone larger, I could have gone to 18 and a half feet instead of 15 and a half. It would also mean that we would have mean, needed more than, more tons of, so. Oh, that makes sense. So she's happy with this size and I was too. And it's, uh, it doesn't overwhelm the property. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect size. So, um, yeah, I, I like the size, but um, if, if you want it a little larger, they can make it larger. So you said yeah. this is multi-layered, so you got at least two or three? There's five layers. Okay. Uh, so the it's regular polyethylene is the main stable part. And then they put films on top of that. Oh. So there's a UV protectant on the outside. Uh, there's a IR thing on the inside and there's an anti-fogging thing on the very inside so you don't want it to completely fog over when the sun's shining you want it to allow the sun in right yeah. so uh -huh. um, uh, so the main costs are well you got to do the choose a I foundation and right uh and so uh, the the lumber was about two hundred dollars the uh, the automatic struts uh, openers show you those <clears throat> you can see the assembly here so it's, it basically is a it's like a, a big bulb thermometer and a hydraulic lift and so as as that big black thing warms up it the uh, uh, it's a, an oil inside, it expands, and it pushes on the little press, and it just opens up the, the vents. Wow. So it's, it's mechanical. It's so it's, yeah, a... it's completely mechanical. There's no electricity out here at all. Fantastic. And uh, to adjust the temperature, you adjust how far the, the little piston comes from. Yeah, the tension. So it's, and I've, I set them both at about 80 degrees. Uh, and it's approximate. Yeah. Um, and so they open up and allow some uh, some flow through. Oh, that's fantastic! I was thinking it was some kind of like 
No, it's completely Since passive. <laughs> That's totally awesome. So how much is that plastic? The, the, the plastic, stuff? I think we paid uh, to, to cover everything was uh, be between 40 and $50. Oh, really? So that was a, a bigger, that's the only thing that you really couldn't do from salvage. Yeah. You, you and buy good stuff. Right. Because you don't want to have to replace it. Exactly. That's like the main right. thing. And then all the all the screws. So there's there's about ten pounds of screws that hold everything together. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I I can't remember. That might be five or ten dollars worth. Okay. That's a lot cheaper than I was thinking. <laughs> No, it's, I didn't know how much the. That's why it's awesome. Like I love the idea. And then the, the door, I made. So it's that's with a single piece of uh, plywood, twenty two dollars from Home Depot. Um, and, and the hinges were probably three dollars a piece. So when you built this, uh, did you do it on your own yeah. and? Yeah. Just completely on your own. Well, and it helped me. Uh huh. So when I Look. um and when we got the pot done, we actually had an additional helper. Okay. Um, but most of it, uh, you could do on your own. I, I could do it on my own if I had. Um, but, a little more coordination. <laughs> gotcha. But you can see that each of these things slope. And so you want to hold a panel in place while you screw it in and they're long. And so it's a lot nicer to have somebody hold the other end while you're screwing in the one side. Once you've got three screws in, then you're set. And uh, the, the other thing I learned is uh, you don't completely screw it together as you go. You leave it a little bit flexible, um, and uh, and let it all adjust. And, and once you've got everything in there, then you screw it all or the other. So there each each strut has five screws, but I just put three in to to start. So I left it a little bit flexible. So from beginning to end, how long did it take you? Um, probably two months. Oh. And that is that working on it full time every day, or is it oh, just no, kind of no, just uh, maybe two or three hours a day? Okay. Very nice. So how, on a difficulty level, what do you think it would be for like a normal? Oh, it's, it should be, anybody can build it. Okay. Very nice. So this material is available for anybody. Yeah. You just go to, it's just common materials. Right. Anybody can do, and anybody can build it. And it's pretty cheap. I have one person that I've uh, sold plans to. It's a father. And a son, and his uh, uh, grade seven son um, was interested in astronomy, and so they wanted a thing to hold their uh, telescope in the backyard. And so they've got a father son project to build this. I give all the formulas to rescale, and so he wanted a 10 foot dome. And he didn't want it covered with this. He had a different material that he was covering it with. And I helped him through that. I told him that I'd do the scaling for him. He says, nope. He says, uh, I've conspired with his seventh grade math teacher that if he'll do the scaling, he'll get credit for it. Good way. Good idea. So <laughs> I just thought that was so cool. Motivation. Yeah. So I love that. So you have a father and son who are building this together. Yep. And uh, the, the last I heard from them, they were d d doing just fine. Yep. And just real excited about it. 
So that's how I feel it. education should be. It's connected with something that they love to do yeah. and they want to do math. So, yep, that's awesome. You would be able to feed somebody, feed the two of you mm-hmm. for the summer. For all the you know, spring, summer, fall. And then I'd be, I'd have enough left over to do some, um, some canning. Canning, okay. And get us through the winter. So if worse came to worse, we wouldn't starve. Fantastic. <laughs> Shoot some deer and eat some veggies. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the deer are paleo yeah, so. friendly or not. So. <laughs> uh, they are actually. Yeah. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fantastic. You got it made. Yeah. <laughs> and as they yeah. try to like get in there, you just yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's our meat. Yeah, if I'd seen them do it, that would have been there yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> I just came out one morning and I was like, well, that was last year. Wow. <laughs> it was up for four years before they decided. <laughs> <laughs> this is easy pickings. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Pretty soon I'm going to be posting another video about Aircrete dome homes. I've always been interested in tiny homes and a cheap way to build alternative homes and being able to do it on your own. And then I'll get into other videos on how to produce power and also obtain water where there is no water, creating a air well that pulls water out of the air naturally and without power.